shit. Ricky, I am fucked up out here. Holy shit, you guys. I'm trying not to freak out. Oh, I'm fucking high! The Infinity War is finally upon us. Uh, oh no, I'm pooping! <laughs> I'm pooping! This is such a big episode that we're just gonna dive into it. You're thinking, hey Charles, do I really have to watch every single movie in the MCU before I see Infinity War? What the hell is an Infinity War? Hey Charles, what the fuck is an Infinity Stone? Have you ever had a dream that that you um you had you 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 could you do you you want you you can Don't worry. I'm going to make sure you guys are all fully prepared before you go and see Infinity War. All right? It's going to be fine. I'm going to walk you there. We're going to be like, "Ooh, and ah, hey man, thanks for that video." I know what's going on, and it's crazy. I think it's good, except it sucks. So let me do the plan, and that way, it might be really good. Wow. On this episode of The Nerdgasm, we're going to be looking back at the MCU and focusing on the important things that you need to know before we rush and go see Infinity War. Correct. I am the smartest man alive! <laughs> and with that, let's do it! Guys? Come on, we rehearsed this like 15 times. I put my fist in the air, and then you guys are supposed to pick me up, and I go, oh, come on, don't do it now. Oh, son of a... So the first thing we need to do is go all the way to the beginning of the MCU and do a timeline breakdown. Breakdown! The Marvel Cinematic Universe was announced, and it would start with a major storyline expanding over three phases. Phase one of the MCU all started with a little movie called Iron Man. Damn. Good luck keeping up. Not only was this movie the start of a huge developed character universe, but it actually made us invested in a character that most people wouldn't normally care about. What's going on here? Let's face it, this is not the worst thing you've caught me doing. Iron Man gave us our first look at a connected universe, as well as something completely new for Marvel, or any studio at that time. One of the biggest things Iron Man introduced was the now infamous after the credits scene. You still here? Not only did this clip make you sit all the way through the credits, but it actually set up a storyline these movies were building up to. Mr. Stark, you become part of a bigger universe. You just don't know it yet. Who the hell are you? Nick Fury, director of S.H.I.E.L.D. Oh. I'm here to talk to you about the Avenger Initiative. We've never seen After the success of Iron Man, it was time to reintroduce a more familiar character from Marvel, like the Incredible Hulk. <laughs> While this movie wasn't as big of a hit, or as good as Iron Man, it was still a foot in the right direction for the MCU. Here you have an unusual problem. You should talk. And another important after credit scene. What if I told you we were putting a team together? Who's we? Wasting no time at all, Iron Man 2 is released. Oh, it's good to be back. The sequel did a great job of introducing more heroes and expanding the universe further, notably introducing War Machine and Black Widow. Iron Man 2 also had a big hand in introducing the next big character in the MCU. In the after the credits scene, Thor's hammer is in the middle of the desert, and S.H.I.E.L.D. operatives are closing in to try and secure the area. Next up was Marvel's biggest gamble yet, with a movie focusing on the God of Thunder, 
Thor. You're unworthy! Father. I am! I now take from you your power! And I cast you out! Thor was another surprise hit, developing and expanding the MCU the most we had ever seen yet. Thor also gave us our first look at Hawkeye. You want me to slow him down, sir? Or are you sending in more guys for him to beat up? Thor was important for also introducing Asgard and the other realms, and Loki, Thor's adoptive brother, god of mischief, and most notably, the guy who keeps fucking shit up for everyone. Most importantly, Thor introduces the Tesseract, which is actually our first glimpse at one of six Infinity Stones. The Tesseract is also known as the Space Stone. Don't worry, this is all gonna make a lot more sense later on, so let's just keep going. Is it too late to go to the bathroom? <laughs> After Thor, there was one more major character that needed introducing before we could have our super team assembled. Captain America, the first Avenger, is released. The the first of many. Hydra is the Nazi deep science division led by Johann Schmidt. He thinks he's a god. Also, Captain America's best friend, Bucky, also played a major role in the film, even before he is sadly killed off. Important things from this movie. Cap sacrifices his life to save the world by crashing a nuke-filled hydroplane into the Arctic. The film ends with S.H.I.E.L.D. discovering Captain America's shield, and then eventually Cap himself frozen as a human popsicle. They thaw him out and welcome him into modern day, leading to the most important superhero team-up ever. We now finally have the Avengers! This movie is a huge milestone in every way. Not only is it a huge financial success, but the MCU is brought together so beautifully. Most notably, this movie introduced our second Infinity Stone, the Mind Stone, and it was used as a weapon in Loki's Scepter. But where did Loki get an Infinity Stone, you ask? Well, let me tell you. Avengers had probably the biggest after credit scene, showing our first glimpse of the big bad villainous titan, Thanos. Is to court death. movie starting off phase two in the MCU is the big letdown Iron Man 3. Iron Man 3 sucked. To me it's the worst movie in the MCU so far. Ho oh, controversy! Iron Man 3 is so bad that you can actually skip it and it doesn't affect knowing anything in the MCU. Anyways moving on from Iron Man 3 is unfortunately another disappointment. Thor the Dark World. The saving grace of this movie is that it introduced the third Infinity Stone and developed the overall MCU storyline, unlike Iron Man 3. In this movie, there is a dangerous red matter known as Ether. What they don't realize is that it makes up the Reality Stone. With Phase 2 having a little bit of a rough start, Captain America the Winter Soldier gets everything back on track. This movie is easily one of the best in the MCU so far, and not only gave more depth, but completely changed all storylines for the future of the MCU. This film also introduces another character to the roster, the Falcon. Also returning back, surprise, surprise, is Bucky. What? Turns out Bucky isn't dead at all. He's now a super assassin working for the Russians, now called the Winter Soldier. 
Also turns out, S.H.I.E.L.D. has been under HYDRA control this whole time, and they turn on Nick Fury and all the remaining loyal S.H.I.E.L.D. agents. What? I come from Earth, a planet of outlaws. The next movie up is another unexpected move from Marvel, with Guardians of the Galaxy. This movie showed a whole other side of the MCU like never before. Pushing the cosmos further than Thor, we got a space adventure mixed with the funniest characters we have seen yet, easily becoming every fan's favorite character, Tima. Also probably one of the best movie soundtracks of all time. <laughs> Guardians also introduced a lot of new and important characters for the MCU. Drax, a.k.a. the Destroyer. Since his wife and family were killed, he's been on a rampage across the galaxy in his search for vengeance. Gamora, surgically modified and trained as a living weapon. The adopted daughter of the mad titan Thanos. Recently, Thanos lent her and her sister Nebula out to Ronin, which leads us to believe that Thanos and Ronin are working together. Subject 89P13 calls itself Rocket the result of illegal genetic and cybernetic experiments on a lower life form. What the hell? They call it Groot, a humanoid plant that's been traveling recently as 89P13's personal houseplant slash muscle. Peter Jason Quill from Terra, raised from youth by a band of mercenaries called the Ravagers, led by Yandu Udanta. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know how this machine worked. What a bunch of a-holes. Oh, my new friends. Before creation itself, there were six singularities. Then the universe exploded into existence, and the remnants of these systems were forged into concentrated ingots. Infinity stones. These stones, it seems, can only be brandished by beings of extraordinary strength. Observe. These carriers can use the stone to mow down entire civilizations like wheat in a field. There's a little pea coming out of me right now. Once for a moment, a group was able to share the energy amongst themselves, but even they were quickly destroyed by it. Beautiful. Try to create a suit of armor around the world. But I created something terrible. Artificial intelligence. Next up is the second outing for the Avengers, in Age of Ultron. While this movie had some great scenes and moments, it was not as epic as the first Avengers movie. This movie also introduces a few more important characters for the universe. Most important character introduced is Vision. He is a sentient being controlled by what used to be Loki's scepter from the first Avengers, the Mind Stone. It gave life and now sits on Vision's forehead. Age of Ultron has one of the most important after credit scenes. Fine. Myself. You give godlike powers to everyone, it's gonna be chaos. So how do we stop him? By knowing I. Next up is another big gamble from Marvel, and probably one of their biggest wild cards, Ant-Man. Also introducing the Prim Particle Breakthrough, and the importance of its power and the need in the MCU. The Prim Particle is essentially what allows Ant-Man to shrink, super strength, all that shit. Ant-Man also had a really great after credit scene with introducing another hero in the MCU, the Wasp. Jim Miller and I worked on together. And with Ant-Man being released, that is the conclusion of now Phase 2. New York. 
Washington, D.C. Marvel wastes no time starting off Phase 3 with their biggest movie yet, Captain America Civil War. This movie is the most important event to happen in the MCU since starting almost 10 years earlier. Not only does this movie introduce very important heroes in the MCU... Sorry, Tony. Move, Captain. I won't ask a second time. On the roof! Hey everyone. It finally deals with the increasing number of superheroes showing up, and more importantly, the villains and threats against Earth. So important factors from this movie, Black Panther and Spider-Man kick a lot of ass, thank fuck they are finally in the MCU, Vision almost kills War Machine by accident, Captain America almost kills Iron Man, and then basically the Avengers are completely split up. And shape reality. We travel great distances. After the events of Civil War, Marvel decides to introduce another hero into the MCU, Doctor Strange. The real reason for introducing Doctor Strange is to show us another layer of the MCU, this time being a secret society of sorcerers that can control and manipulate energy to their will. But is he ready? While Doctor Strange is learning to become a great sorcerer, he comes into possession of the fifth Infinity Stone, the Time Stone. Not only does he collect the Time Stone, but he uses it to his will to defeat a monstrous demon to save Earth. Hope you're ready. It'll be here any minute. So next up we have the highly anticipated Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Star-Lord finds his dad. His dad turns out to be a celestial being, basically a god, who has a human form, but is actually a douchebag planet that kills other planets to help keep himself alive. Uh, yeah, what the fuck. Really, the reason for this movie is that Star-Lord finds out he's half god, which really means he's stronger than he thinks, and should come in handy against Thanos. Also, an alien race is really angry and seeks revenge on the Guardians, so they plan to send a bounty hunter after them called Adam. This has led many fans to believe that Adam refers to Adam Warlock, who is an extremely key character in the comics in defeating Thanos. The MCU hasn't really made any other mention of Adam, so who knows what the fuck is going on. Now we move on to one of the most anticipated movies in the MCU. Really, it's one of the most anticipated movies for this character's franchise. And I'm extremely happy to say that Spider-Man Homecoming is up there as one of the best movies in the MCU. Important things from this film. Tony Stark and Peter's mentor-mentee relationship continues to grow, and we see a lot of development with their characters. Tony offers Peter a spot with the Avengers and a brand new Iron Spider suit. Peter turns him down and says he wants to just be a kid for a while. Oh, Spidey. God, this feels so strange. Oh. Hey so much has happened since I last saw you. I lost my hammer, like yesterday, so that's still pretty fresh. And then I went on a journey of self-discovery. Where I met you. So after Spidey, we have the perfect continuation of Phase 3 with Thor Ragnarok. Not only is this the best Thor movie we've seen, it's also the best Hulk movie. Also introducing important characters to the MCU. I'll listen to you till this is empty. Asgard is in danger. If people are dying, we need to get back there. I need your help. Wow. Finished. Bye. Important things from this movie. Thor's hammer is destroyed. Thor learns God Mode, another way to control his power without his hammer. Sound right? Well, that's true. What were you the god of again? Asgard is destroyed with the last of their people on a spaceship. Loki is still a douche and steals the Tesseract yet again. 
And lastly... We're the same, you and I. Just a couple of hot-headed fools. Yeah, same. Hulk like fire, mm. though I like water. Well, kind of both like fire. But Hulk like raging fire, though I like smoldering fire. <laughs> After the credits scene, a huge yeah, fucking ship shows up right in front of the ship carrying Thor and all the Asgardians. I believe that that's Thanos' ship, and he is going to take the Infinity Stone from the Tesseract. I wouldn't worry, brother. I feel like everything's going to work out fine. I never freeze. Now we get to our most recent film in the MCU, Black Panther. Finally, the most diverse cast, the most diverse heroes we have seen yet in the MCU. This gives us our deepest look into Wakanda yet. It shows us that they are the most technology advanced nation on the planet, and it really shows that they have our biggest chance at defeating Thanos. With the help of the Avengers, of course. This movie introduces a ton of important characters. Is an undercover spy. She takes people down any way she can. I got into a disagreement. Did he freeze? Like an antelope in headlights. <laughs> Are you finished? And with that, we are all caught up on the MCU, so now let's discuss what this all means. If you guys have been paying attention, I've only listed five of six Infinity Stones. I'm freaking out, man. Last place we saw it was with Loki at the end of Thor Ragnarok. Thanos would want this stone because it would allow him to travel anywhere in the universe at any time. We all know that it went from Loki's scepter to now Vision's head. And to no surprise, the Mind Stone has the power to control, yup, you guessed it, that's right, your farts, uh, brain, uh, mind. Yup, it has the power to control your mind. Nailed it, boo! It's pretty obvious why Thanos would want this stone. It would make it extremely easy to enslave a whole planet, or maybe just to control the minds of some of Earth's mightiest heroes. But if I may ask, why not keep it secure in your own vault? The Tesseract is already on Asgard. It is not wise to keep two Infinity Stones so close together. The last time we saw the Reality Stone is when it was being delivered to the Collector at the end of Thor The Dark World. The Reality Stone has the power to alter reality as well as turn it into dark matter. I can assure There's a lot of reasons why Thanos would want this stone. Last time we saw this was in Guardians of the Galaxy, and they handed the stone over to the Nova Corps for safekeeping. Now we all know that the Power Stone has endless amounts of energy and destructive force that can actually destroy all life, and it's pretty obvious why Thanos would want this one. With a snap of his fingers, he could destroy a planet. Oh, Thanos! This is time. Endless, looped time. And the last place we saw this stone was safely being held with Doctor Strange. This stone has the ability to manipulate time, and there's many reasons why Thanos would want this stone. As we saw in Doctor Strange, he could technically make himself live forever, or keep living in a moment, like destroying Earth. Also, he could use the time stone for something like this. Hey guys, did I tell you to subscribe to my channel? Don't forget to like, comment, and share. Hey guys, did I tell you to subscribe to my channel? Don't forget to like, comment, and share. Hey guys, did I tell you to subscribe to my channel? Get down, 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 get down. Get down, get down. All right, well that brings us to the sixth and final stone, the Soul Stone. Technically, as of yet, this last Infinity Stone has not been introduced in the MCU as of yet. There are a lot of theories flying around about where this stone could be. The Soul Stone has the power to give the holder complete control over any life forms in the universe, as well as taking abilities from any superheroes that we might know. 
So I mean, obviously Thanos wants this stone. He could literally take everybody's ability and just murder them. <laughs> we already know that there's gonna be some or maybe a lot of characters that have been with us since day one that are probably gonna die in this battle. This is a huge movie. I mean, the filmmakers as well as Marvel even went as far. They post on all social media pleading with fans to please respect the movie and don't share any spoilers online. I said, you better not! You better not! And actually because of that, I want to let you guys know that the Nerdgasm is going to be taking a little bit of a break after this video. <laughs> There's no reason to freak out. Everybody calm down. You are freaking out, man. I'm gonna be working on a few other projects. I'm making another short film. I'm working on another series that will be on my channel. Uh, and I wanna just devote some of my time towards that. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, I'm gonna say it again. Hey guys, did I tell you to subscribe to my channel? Don't forget to like, comment, and share. Thanks again for stopping by. And I'll see you next time on the Nerdgasm. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I swear to God, if Thanos kills Captain America, I'm gonna shit out of my dick. I'm gonna be so upset. The end is near. When I'm done, half of humanity still exist. I'm Peter, by the way. Doctor Strange. Oh, you're using your made-up names. Then I am Spider-Man.